Good morning. I would say, Addie, y'all let Graceland make as much noise as she wants to today. It is so wonderful to hear a baby in the church. Today's verse, scripture verses, come from Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to him to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to revert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from the heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, that that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let them be the one to be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin, for I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Gay. Now, today I'm going to start us, I'm starting a sermon series that the series is going to be called A Guide to Freedom in the Love of Christ. I'm really convinced that right now we are in a time that is very much like the dilemma that was faced by the church in Galatia when Paul wrote this letter. For I think that we could say together that we, when we take the bread and the cup each week, we understand ourselves to be Christian. And yet, maybe it's not your experience much of the time, but I know for me, in much of my time, I spend time at odds with myself and at odds with others in ways that I don't believe Jesus is. How about y'all? Do you ever feel self-condemnation? Do you ever can feel like you're condemning others? Do you ever feel isolated from all of reality? Do you ever see somebody who looks really lonely? Do you ever carry around animosity and remember that Christ doesn't carry animosity for you? I believe that we can understand why Paul speaks with such harsh words here, such desperate words here, and we shall see as we walk through Galatians together, he is very poignant, and it's because there's so much at stake. If you have been given something and then forget you have it, it can be in the closet, but you can't enjoy it. Right? If you have been given something and you learned how to do it, but you don't actually use it, you don't get to enjoy it. I want you to know, I know how to ride a bike. Yes, I know I could be bragging for some of you that may have never learned how to ride a bike, but I know how to ride a bike, but I would just like to tell you that recently I have not ridden a bike. I haven't done a wheelie in like 40 years, maybe, maybe 50, think about it. But that's why you know I could, I could ride a wheelie for like six blocks. People were amazed. There goes George on his on his huffy. It was a huffy uh, with with cheater slicks and a banana seat. But there he goes. He's just riding down. And it, that boy knows how to ride a bike. He's amazing at riding a bike. And now, if you followed me around for like a whole year, you'd go, he doesn't know how to ride a bike. I don't think the guy knows how to ride a bike. Paul was riding. Well, I want to make it light so that you open up to what the truth is. And not get, not get caught up in fear. 
Paul was dealing with something that was very much like that, but very serious. Because if we learn to love and we experience love, forget how. If we experience love and love others and then forget to get on the bike, it's a big deal. We miss out on love ourselves and the others around us miss out on love. So let's just walk through these 12 verses real quickly. And the good news is I won't try to preach everything in this book in one Sunday. You're welcome. I'm going to keep this brief compared to what we're going to unpack. Today, my goal is for you to have great hope for what it means to have freedom in the love of Christ and that we will pay attention to when we are abandoning the gospel of Jesus. Notice when we abandon the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Notice when we abandon it. We take communion every week, so we come back to it. Notice when we are abandoning it. Notice when we leave it in the closet. Notice when we don't get on and ride with the joy and the freedom that was intended for us. First, Paul says, I, I, what I give you, I give you as an apostle of Jesus Christ, not human authority. <clears throat> Have any of y'all been around or listened lately to all the people who claim authority? I'm kind of, I just want you to know, I just, as a human, I'm just tired. Of it. I'm tired of little, uh, little sound bites telling me what I ought to think, what I ought to do, and what I ought to, who the good guys are and who the bad guys are, and they just have authority like they really know what they're talking about. And what we have to pay attention to, which is what Paul's helping us pay attention, is that there's a difference between the gospel that's given by God in Jesus Christ and the empires. I want to use the word empire so that I, you don't have to be personal. Every political power system, every home power system in your households and families, every religious power system, all empire. What's the word? Empire. Empire. Just remember, empire. There's a power system, and the people at the top are not Jesus. Got it? Empire. People at the top, not Jesus. And the people at the top tell you, if you're going to be part of what I'm talking about, you have to, you have to do what I tell you to do and say what I tell you to say, believe what I tell you to believe. So they had all the power systems who, who will even talk in God talk. You remember Paul, don't you? He was once called Saul. You remember what he was doing when he was Saul? Persecuting Christians. In other words, he had an authority that claimed to be God, and he, in the name of God, was causing Christians to be killed. Woo! Killing them because of the authority that was in the name of God. Take it away, the joy sound. It's okay. Okay, just know we love you. Okay, okay. And when, when, you, when you think about it, Paul was killing people in the name of God, having people killed. He wasn't actually doing the killing. But he, and he ends up taking this new gospel, this new good news, this new version of God, and he ends up getting stoned himself for preaching. There's a difference. Everybody listen. Please listen. There's a difference between any empire and the good news of Jesus Christ. If it's the empire of your mommy and your daddy, you have to hate your father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, even your own life. If they're not in harmony with Jesus Christ, you have to say, even though you taught me certain things, I will not continue according to those teachings. If it's your political empire, you have to say, even though I may agree and disagree partly with what you're saying and disagree with it, you will not have the ultimate authority in my life. And even if it's your religion, if you end up acting out, and remember, Jesus and Paul are all clear. You must look at fruit, not talk, not yak, yak, and yak words about God, but actually how you live your life. How you live your life in the empire is very different than how you live your life in the spirit of Jesus. Well, he says, I didn't come by authority of any human authority. And we got to make sure that's understand. Because if you go, if I say to you, what do you believe? And you answer, this is what I believe. And I say, who taught you that? And you say a person. And then where do you think they got it? And that person you find out got it from somebody, got it from somebody, got it from somebody. And then somebody ends up saying, I got it from Jesus Christ then let's, let's find out if that's true. But I'm, pro I'm proposing to you that what Paul is saying here would be that you are now being taken away by 
teachings that will not trace themselves back to, nor come alive and broaden into the world through Jesus Christ. They are part of an empire. And then he says, I greet you in grace and peace. Always have a stop right now and just go, let's remember grace and peace. Grace, the word, means gift. If any authority tells you you have to do and has anything on the list, it's not grace. Y'all know those gifts that have uh, things that come attached, right? What about those gifts that don't come until you do what you're supposed to do and act like you're supposed to do? I'm not saying there's not even a place for that. I actually told my sons, here's what will happen after the yard is mowed. Right? Nothing wrong with that. But Jesus Christ didn't come along and say, after you, I'll love you. He came along. He said, I want to give you a gift. Here's the gift. I love you. Here's the gift. The way you were made is the way I made you, and I love you the way you're made. If you'd stop trying to be someone else and stop trying to think that you're better or worse than someone else, we can under, we'll be together. So just from the beginning, understand grace and peace. Think about it for a minute. You get wrest, you're wrestling with guilt and shame. Guilt, guilt, real guilt, real shame. I would just like to tell you, grace. Time for a big, big deep breath. Guilt and shame. You think you're better than someone or someone told you they were better than you? And you might be buying into it that you think you're a little better because someone told you or that you're not as good as someone else because someone told you. Not true. I love you. I think it's time for another deep breath. I don't know about y'all, but I have a hard time with that one sometimes. Not only do I get to thinking I'm better than somebody, I get to thinking I'm not as good as somebody. Not only do I think um, I'm worthy, but sometimes I think I'm unworthy. How about the people who feel lonely? Times when I and you feel lonely. Grace, you're not alone. How about when you just can't get it right? Have y'all ever had that? You figure it'll turn out better if I can just get it right. That person will do what they I think they ought to do or the world will run better or everything will turn out right, or I'll get that job, or I'll, this will go right if I can just get it right. And if I can't get it right, it's all my fault that the world doesn't run the way it's supposed to run. Because I got to get it right. And I would just like to say, Grace, you're loved and the world's working in ways that we can't understand. And it's not your job to run it. And then what about fear? I remember my son telling me there was a, a bad guy under his bed. I was like, buddy, there's no bad guy under your bed. Look. Real calm. And I looked under the bed, but there's no bad guy. And I think there is. I'm like, well, there's not. And you know what? Until he decided there wasn't a bad man in the room, it didn't matter how many times I said, there's no bad man. You understand? And what about you? Has anybody come along and with grace just said, God's not, God's not against you. God is not against you. There are bad people in the world, but God's not against you. You're okay. And peace. Have you gotten a good night's sleep recently? Have you laid in your bed and thought, in light of everything God is and everything I know about God, in, in light of my capacity to be loved and to love that God gave me, Fasting God gave me everything that I need to do can be done. So and Paul is waking up in a world in which he's noticing people he loved, people he told about Jesus, but have been experiencing the freedom from guilt and shame and animosity and loneliness and the drive to try and get it right and full of fear. And they've been released from their fears, from their guilt, from their shame, from their animosity, from their loneliness, from their drivenness to get it right. They've been released from all of that. And now they're coming back and saying, hey, wait a minute. Now we've got to do this and we've got to do that. The peace is leaving. Notice he says, 
that we are to be delivered out of this present age. I think it's interesting. The Greek actually means to be delivered out of the age that is proving to be evil. What I figured out was the more I learn about myself and how the world works, the more I realize that there's things that aren't right about our world, and there are reasons those things were not right. There's history that created who I am, who my family is, who our world is, how everything works. And what has happened is it's proving to be evil. And I'll tell you what happens in people who are trapped in the empire. People who are trapped in the empire come back and say, you cannot know the truth about your history because the grace of God is not the point. You have to believe yourself to be superior and good. And so you cannot pay attention to your sin. And it's partly because they don't fully trust the grace of God. I really need to know what my life is doing in the lives of others. I need to pay attention to the way my words and actions, my consumption patterns, everything works out in other people's lives because then I can know the truth and inside of grace, adjust how I live, adjust how I speak, adjust how I relate and stop being part of the empire, which is proving to be evil. Hmm. And then he, he points out, he says, I'm astonished. And the, the words actually mean that you're being removed from him who gave you grace. You're being removed from the one who gave you grace. In other words, you're in grace and you have that experience and then you're being moved out of, moving out of him. You're, you're there with your guilt forgiven, with your shame. You've, you've, announced, you've heard announced that you're lovely and worthy and, and awesome. You've, you've had all the animosity between you and God is gone and you're, you're pres the presence of Christ is with you and, and you're able to discern the will of God and you're fears are gone and you're in the midst of that and you're 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 losing touch with it. you're being removed from it y'all y'all remember any times you were removed from your grace and peace Whew. and i remember i remember times when i was young and times when it wasn't that long ago in fact i got a I had a call with one of my best friends in life today, and he's going through a very hard time. And he said, George, last night I was so full of anger, and I just had to wrestle and wrestle in prayer. I was just so full of anger. He wanted to deal with what was going on and take a action, aggressive action, and he had to pray and pray and pray. How is it going with you? How have you noticed that we lose touch, we get carried away from our peace and our grace. And he says, you've, you've ended up with a gospel that's a different gospel. And then he says, but there's not really a different gospel. You just have a substitute. You've, you've taken the good news of Jesus Christ and you've substituted this empire system of how you get exception, acceptance and place and power. And he says they should, they should be accursed as ways some, pe some people translate it. The word is anathema in Greek. And what it means is that it means to be in a, in a place where you're the, dead, the thing you're dedicated to leads to destruction. Anathema. The thing you're dedicated to leads to your destruction. The thing you're dedicated to leads to your destruction. When George repeats something, it means he, at least he thinks it's important. The thing you're dedicated to leads to to your destruction. Have you ever seen somebody doing that? Okay, now if you continue in your life of crime, it will destroy you. Is that a pretty obvious one? If you continue to treat people or that in your life that way, you will end up alone. If you continue to do that thing to your body, you will end up destroying the health of your body. If you end up, and he's saying, here's this generation, this empire, this Roman empire, this Jewish empire that, that is going to insist on there being a veil. They insist on there being a veil, a veil, a block, a, a, a curtain where you cannot see the perfect presence of God. And only one person, one time a year for one few minutes goes into the full presence of God. And Jesus comes along. And what did Jesus do with that veil? Everybody is available 
and in the presence of God. Everybody. The way you're going is going to maintain the veil, and the way that you're going when you don't know God and you don't know the love of God and share the love of God will lead to your destruction. Anathema. You see, when I was young, I, when I read the English, I thought it was like God up here cursing somebody down there. And I kept trying to make sense of it. I'm like, why does the God who came in Jesus Christ, died on the cross, rose from the dead, all of a sudden become a God who's up there condemning people? Turns out that's not what it said. I was so happy. To learn. I tell you, I was real happy. I, I raised with a daddy who, who, uh, can make, who uh, I was afraid of. And so it was easy for me to think I'm supposed to be afraid of God to stay in line. Turns out that's not what Jesus was saying. So there's a different way, a different truth, a different life. And then lastly, he talks about that he received it as a, an apocalypse of Jesus Christ. Again, when we hear the word apocalypse, apocalyptus in Greek, what we hear is, a, is an ending because the revelation, we believe, is about the ending of the world. The revelation in the scriptures is actually about the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. But plenty of people have read the English and assumed things and made it about the end of the world. In the book of Revelation, it's not talking about that. It's talking about the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. And what it says is, here's the revelation. Not the apocalypse like the end of everything, but the apocalypse is, here's the revelation. And the revelation is that the one who gave us access to God is gonna come and there's gonna be a persecution that starts arising, and then what's going to happen is the temple is going to be totally destroyed. Not one rock left on top of the other, and you're going to totally take away that temple, and then the church of Jesus Christ is going to go on. And you'll see, he's going to end up saying that everyone's included, slave and free, Jew and Greek, male and female. We're all in. And so when the apocalypse, the revelation of Jesus Christ, Paul says, I have come, and I've received it as a revelation that comes from Jesus Christ. And I believe it is foolish to have the freedom of the love and grace and peace of Christ and then to let someone in some empire remove you from the love and grace. Paul wrestles with it. I wrestle with it. I would submit most of us when we're honest with ourselves, wrestle with the fact that we'd really like sometimes to trade it in. I don't know if you guys, you may have some kind of perfect marriage that I can't understand, but every once in a while, I'd just like to change things. Y'all ever have? I mean, I would like to just look her in the face and say, stop. Just stop thinking differently than me. I would like to look her in the face and say, you keep wanting that, stop it. Just stop wanting that. You keep noticing that about me that gets on your nerves and might even be toxic to myself and others. I want you to stop pointing that. Just stop. And I just want to take over. Sometimes I would like somebody to hand me a law that would tell me everything I'm supposed to do and everything I'm not. And I would hand the law to you. And if you didn't do exactly like I said, we would punish you for not doing what I told what you're told to do. We would just make this world work. And as I've said many times before, if I was in charge, it would go well for you guys. It would be good. Y'all would, would be in to be great. Then there'd be all those other people that might not go so well. We are tempted to try and find our place in an empire, to submit ourselves to family, to nationhood, to work, or to anything, including patterns of living that lead to destruction to be part of the evil age and the revelation, the apocalypse that has come through Jesus Christ tells us the good news. And the good news is we are loved and God loves, not only loves us, but is living in us and working through us. That's the way it is. So now I'd like us to have a piece, just a time of prayer. We've taken the bread and the cup. I've tried to remind us and uh, I've had a lot on my mind the last few days with lots of different roles I've been playing and getting frustrated with myself, my capacities and incapacities to keep things straight in my head. And I need what I hope you'll receive. That is some time to be reminded that we are every one of us loved by God. There is no one excluded. There is no one more worthy or less worthy. There is no one more 
qualified to have and use the spirit of God, no one less. We are the ones who have been given the grace and gift of God's love. And we have been offered peace, passes understanding that's found inside them. Let's go now and just have a moment of silent prayer. And then I'll lead us in prayer as we approach singing our hymn of commitment which is about Jesus calling us beyond the tumult. I love the word tumult. I would just say the mess into this grace and peace. Lord, right now, just help us to breathe peacefully and to open ourselves up to receive or to be reminded of and re-enter into your grace and peace. Thank you that you love us so. Thank you that everything that causes guilt is simply there by your spirit to teach us how to love ourselves, love our neighbors, love our world better. Help us remember that when we're filled with shame, some regret about who we are or how we fit in the world or don't, you want us to know that, that shame comes from someone else, comes from something else other than you. If you have made us as we are, we are loved as we are. It's just the person we are that can find and know your love and share it. Help us to remember that when we feel alone, that's what it is, a feeling. It's not the truth. And help us to help others know that it's not true when they're feeling lonely. And that we would enter into one another's lives and become the expression of the presence of your spirit. Help us to know your grace. You are in Jesus Christ, grace and peace. And we have Jesus. Fill us and move us by your spirit. Amen. <laughs>